Hello and welcome to the Commercial Horticulture webinar series. My name is Ainava Majumdar and I'm extension entomologist for vegetable crops statewide. And today I'm going to discuss about uh, conventional insecticides. We get a lot of questions about uh, the conventional insecticides, some of the modes of action. So today I'm going to discuss some of the, um, the main ones that uh, I think uh, farmers can pay attention to. And remember a lot of these conventional products also are available in the, in the home garden. Uh, in the home market, so for for gardening purposes. So please read the label, uh, and if you need more information, you can find it on our website, alamabeginningfarmer.com, and uh, also on the uh, aces.edu slash vegetable IPM page. Some of what you will hear today is from the 2020 Vegetable Crop Handbook. Remember that this, this handbook is revised annually and it's important to get the latest edition from your uh, extension agent. Uh, you can contact your county extension office and a regional extension agent if you're in Alabama. If you're in any other state, uh, you can contact uh, the extension agent there, uh, the county office uh, to get a copy. But it's important to get the, the latest edition and uh, also the uh, some of the recommendations change over time. So if you're watching uh, recordings, uh, please uh, contact your extension office and get uh, updated information and read the label. Just to give you an overview, uh, we have seen some trends in synthetic insecticides and, um, and we have seen, we're familiar with some of the older insecticides, uh, for example, uh, Zeta, Sapermethrin, Malathion that are still in the market and uh, you can see them as pretty popular products. Now these were short chain insecticides. Uh, they have excellent contact action uh, and that's why they're very popular. And over time, they're also very cost effective. Uh, compare that to new insecticides. For example, uh, indoxacarb, spinot uh, spinoterum uh, that are on the right of your screen. Uh, these are long chain molecules and uh, what happens is once the uh, insecticide penetrates the body of the insect, they're activated by uh, insect enzymes and, they're, uh, and then become target specific. So they're a lot, um, lot more safer than some of the older insecticides that have a non-selective action. So we are seeing uh, the market shift from non-selective general purpose insecticides to more of the selective insecticides. And many of them have contact, um, uh, ingestion, uh, stomach action, they can be applied systemic. So there's a wide variety of, of, uh, of action with these newer chemistries. There are four or five major insecticide modes of action. Um, and this is a page out of the um, uh, vegetable handbook which has a list of insecticides. It's difficult to read on the screen. It's much better in your handbook, but there are overall, there are these five categories of insecticides. For example, uh, uh, insecticides that affect the nerve and muscles, insecticides that affect the growth and development of insects. Uh, there are insecticides that affect the cellular respiration. Uh, and then there is uh, one insecticide group uh, which affects the midgut. And, uh, and that is BT or Dipel, that's the stomach insecticide, very popular organic product. And there are products that have unknown or non-specific mode of action. Uh, and we'll uh, go a little bit through these different groups. And you can see uh, uh, the majority of these, the, the conventional products we see in the market today are um, uh, act on nerve, insect nerves and muscles. Uh, and they have excellent contact, uh, systemic or translaminar action. Again, this is a page out of the handbook that has the uh, different insecticides listed. And you'll see the chemical class on the left uh, of the page or on this screen. And when you see a number like 1A, 1B, those are the uh, chemical classes. And the reason they're mentioned or organized by numbers is farmers can rotate the products. So it makes selecting products from different groups easier when you see a, 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 the, the list with those numbers on there. 
And then um, on the list, you will also see uh, different, some of the major insect pests on the top. And then uh, there's a rating system that entomologists have developed. Uh, and, and most of the products here that are listed are, have good, fair, or uh, fair, good, or excellent uh, category. So they're effective products. The non-effective products or products that uh, have been out of the market are taken out of the handbook. So let's go through the quickly the modes of action, the major ones. Of course, we have the big um, group of the old products, the class 1A, 1B, which includes products like Malathion, Orthene, uh, Dimethoid uh, 7, uh, which is still sold in the home garden market. And, uh, and most of these products are contact insecticides. They have a broad uh, action and they affect the, um, the insecticide nervous system. And, uh, uh, and with their long-term use, we, we have seen insecticide resistance build up. And that's when a lot of these products have a fair to good rating. Um, and, and the longer we use the products, the insects, in, insects are becoming resistant to these products. The next big group is the um, synthetic pyrethroids, the very popular uh, group three insecticides. They also affect the insect nervous system. They have a very quick knockdown, which makes them very popular. And within this chemical class, group three, we have seen newer products like bifenthrin, which are much more photostable, which means they are much more tolerant of sunlight. Uh, so, uh, and they're retained better. Uh, they have better persistence. Uh, once again, because they have been around for a long time, insecticide resistance is common to these products. The uh, next group is the uh, popular neonicotinoid group, class 4A insecticides. Now these, these have systemic as well as contact action. Uh, and some of the newer insecticides within the 4A class have uh, very good contact action. Uh, they're also translaminar, which means they, are, they go into the leaf and uh, they absorb in the leaf tissue and they have a pretty long uh, residual compared to class three insecticides. So that's why they are very popular. Plus they give you the flexibility of different application uh, system. You can apply uh, many of them through the drip irrigation system. Uh, they're very good early season products to, tr to start with. And a lot of far farmers use them uh, early in the season to get a long, uh, long term protection and then followed by uh, need based foliar applications of insecticides. The, uh, the other one that I wanted to highlight is the, um, is the four class 4D, which includes spinosad based products. Uh, we, have, we are familiar with uh, Black Hawk. Um, the organic version is called Entrust. Now these are derived from microbes, uh, but they don't have the microbial cells um, and they're extremely toxic to, in, uh, to insects, very good insecticides. Uh, the one that we have tried in Alabama for a long time and, uh, and is found very effective against caterpillars is radiant. Uh, radiant is very good against caterpillars and thrips um, and uh, some other insect pests there. It's a good uh, product for rotating with. And these are, um, again, uh, have organic version and the chemical version and the organic version is called Entrust. The next group that I want to highlight are the insect growth regulators. I really want uh, growers to pay attention to this group uh, because the insect growth regulators, for example, Ryman, uh, Intrepid, uh, these are great products uh, for caterpillar control and they're very selective uh, and they act only on the caterpillars. They would not kill any of the moths. So we never target the moths with these products and we, we are targeting the early, uh, early instars of these caterpillars. Uh, and um, these products like Intrepid and uh, Ryman, they're extremely uh, effective uh, early in the season or if, with timely applications and very good rotation partners. So if you are using synthetic pyrethroids uh, and you uh, get into a drought situation, as we have seen in Alabama, uh, we are getting prolonged droughts or we're getting flash droughts. In those situations, it's, uh, synthetic pyrethroids can flare up spider mites. It's always good to rotate them with other 
cl chemical classes and the, this group of insect growth regulator products are very good rotation partners uh, in an in a IPM uh, strategy. The last uh, group I want to mention uh, is this emerging group of insecticides that includes popular products like Corrigen. And we have seen some more products uh, come in the market and uh, they have very unique chemistry and they can be applied systemic and also foliar. They're mostly very effective as systemic uh, poisons early in the season. Just quickly showing pictures of uh, use of uh, Intrepid, which is uh, insect growth regulator uh, in um, a stress environment. This is 2016 uh, research uh, in Clanton. 2016 was a prolonged drought, uh, extremely hard drought. And you can see the um, control was hammered with caterpillars and the, the products treated with Intrepid uh, 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 look uh, great in comparison. Um, you do see some uh, sting bug feeding, but overall the product uh, looks great. And here's some pictures uh, in the picture of, uh, pro of tomatoes sprayed with, uh, with Ryman, which is also another insect growth regulator. Uh, so again, the point is under stress situations, we need to carefully plan our IPM uh, strategy and uh, avoid getting spider mites. Uh, so we need to have a good rotation for, with chemical insecticides uh, and also save our natural enemies. Make sure you look for the warning labels on the uh, warning language on the insecticide labels. Uh, for example, look for the, the pollinator mark on uh, certain insecticides and uh, follow those uh, recommendations. Finally, uh, make sure you're using uh, or integrating cultural, mechanical, and other pest management tactics first um, before you use uh, chemicals. Uh, use insecticides as a last resort, not the first resort. Uh, think broadly of why uh, 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 insect outbreaks are happening and do not apply uh, over apply um, insecticides. Uh, rotation is very important, so please contact your uh, extension agent and uh, develop a, a well-written IPM plan and uh, the, uh, your IPM plan should be unique to your farm. And then read and understand the pesticide label because label is the law. Thank you very much.